Thanks for joining us at Right on Replicas, where we bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the Dan Fink's Speed Wagon from the Dan Fink Metal Works, which was a collaboration between uh, Tom Taylor and Dan Fink, and uh, was basically a showcase for the Ford Special Vehicle Operations Catalog Division to show off their speed equipment. Well, this model is a 125th scale Ravel kit number 85-4373 and it's a reissue as uh, this has been perennially popular model. Uh, it's rated for skill level 3 for um, you know advanced builders and mostly due because of the suspension assembly and intricate body paint. It comes with 111 parts molded in white, chrome, clear and red clear and comes with vinyl tires. Assembly is pretty straightforward, uh, with sub-assemblies uh, being the fi final sequences, and <clears throat> the motor is nicely detailed with some basic wiring. It uh, looks really great. The chassis and suspension are a hot rod setup, and construction of the front suspension is a little tricky. The interior is pretty basic. The body is a multiple part unit requiring paint and steps with different colors. It can be difficult to paint it correctly if you're a beginner, so I wouldn't recommend it for a novice. The decals have some wood siding on them and they look pretty nice too. The instructions are typical Ravel uh, book style and the overall dimensions are approximately five and uh, a quarter inch long, uh, two and three quarter inches wide, and about two and three eighths inches high. Here are the decals for this kit. As you can see they're very colorful and the registry is good. I strongly recommend using some decal setting solution to make it fit those contours. But as always, use the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines when using any of the products mentioned here in the review for your own protection. For most of the construction, I use Model Master liquid cement and sometimes a slow setting tube glue. But other adhesives are used too for strength like super glue and white glue for clear parts. Mostly the paints are Tamiya acrylic bottle paints that are shot through an airbrush or rattle can paints that can be used for things like primers. Pull these parts out of the kit and the assembly starts with the motor. We'll assemble the major block components prior to painting so put the block, the oil pan, the heads and the front cover together and paint the block Ford blue and the transmission aluminum. Now add the transmission pan and the valve covers and paint the starter black and gold uh, for the solenoid and install that. Paint the belt flat black and add the alternator in the AC unit and install that onto the motor. The oil filter is white uh, and added and then cut the distributor location off of the intake because uh, uh, for this build I'm going to show you how to install a uh, handmade um, uh, wired distributor. But otherwise um, go ahead and paint that uh, black and uh, paint the intake aluminum with the black distributor. So uh, install the intake and the intake plenum is aluminum with a white and orange filter and uh, install that into place. Uh, of course you can buy pre-wired distributors um, but I just made one out of some spare electrical wires from an old computer and some um, beading wire there uh, and just uh, made my own. It's not hard to do with a little plastic tubing for the distributor body. So put one together or buy a pre-wired one and then um, just drill out the um, the place for the, the shaft goes in uh, and then use some super glue to install the distributor shaft then drill out some uh, holes for the uh, on the heads for where the spark plugs would be and then run the wires and uh, put the uh, boots into place and glue it uh, with a little super glue. So now you can see the um, left side of the engine with the wires in place and the alternator or the uh, oil filter there and then on the right side you can see that air intake filter and the wires in place there. We'll work on the tires now so um, note that the, the tires are smaller in the front than the rears so use the proper sizes uh, with all the matching parts there um, larger parts for the rear end and now the tires are non-directional so th and they have no sidewall marking so you can basically put them on in any place or in any direction. Paint the rim backs uh, chrome 
and to create a used look I just press and rolled tread on a sheet of fine sandpaper to give it a, a roughed up tread looking worn look and then install the uh, rim fronts and the backs lining the spokes up together. Get these uh, suspension parts out for assembly. Glue the differential cover on to the uh, rear axle and paint that unit black and then the brakes are painted steel leaving the discs a chrome color and so insert the brakes on the axle and snap the tires into place. Get the parts out for the front suspension and the brakes are painted steel leaving the discs chrome there too. Then insert the brakes onto the axle and snap the tires into place on that. Get the parts out for the chassis and we'll remove the copyright information with, uh, with a razor blade and uh, sand the area smooth. Then paint the exhaust steel with some red mufflers uh, and the brake booster is assembled and painted steel and black. The cross member is black and the chassis is flat black with black frame rails. Then the gas tank is aluminum. Glue the exhaust pipes into place and add the brake booster to the cross member and install that. Now get the shocks and the related parts here to complete the front suspension. Install the front suspension and add the shocks and this is time consuming uh, but it needs to be done with care so carefully scrape any glue contact uh, points that need uh, to have the chrome or paint removed. Now paint the steering box black and install it and the rear shocks are steel and installed in place with the rear suspension. Grab these parts too. I recommend that you use some super glue here for strength and be sure to scrape off any contact points of chrome or paint so that uh, they stick well. The front and rear suspension parts are then installed in place to complete the chassis. On the front suspension, slide the steering linkage through the radius arms and then install the unit in place on the frame and the axle. Add the front bumper and for the rear suspension, add the stabilizer bars to the frame and axle and add the rear bumper. We use these pieces for the final chassis assembly by adding the motor into place and then painting the drive shaft and the gas tank top aluminum. The motor is shown installed in place here with the drive shaft connected to the transmission and differential. Then install the gas tank top uh, and on each side of the motor add the headers and mount them to the exhaust pipes. So here we've completed the rolling chassis and makes a good mount for the rest of your model. Gather up the parts for the interior and we'll be painting that next. I used a two-tone uh, tan scheme for my paint. Assemble the seats and the seat backs and paint the door panels, seats and interior flooring tan and then the door panel tops and bottom parts uh, and the seat sides are done in the second brown color, uh, the other tan. <laughs> the, the pedals then are flat black. I decided to add some carpeting to my model so I got some of craft flocking from a craft store but you can buy the stuff online and sifted out uh, any clumps to make sure that I had a good smooth uh, mixture there and I painted the uh, floor with some white glue sprinkled on some of the flocking tamped it down a bit and then uh, tamp tapped off the excess and viola you've got yourself a carpeted car model Install the pedals, add the seats, and then install the door panels. Detail the dashboard with tan on tan paint and black knobs and controls. Then a decal is added to the chrome instrument panel and installed from the back side. Then paint the column tan with silver control sticks and uh, black tips. The wheel is black and the alum uh, with aluminum and tan mast. Attach the steering wheel to the column and uh, note the um, the delicate nature of the instrument gauge decal here. It's it's pretty thin and it'll get wrinkled easily. So handle that very carefully. Install the dash into the slots provided in the interior tub. Get out the body parts now and we'll begin painting. Uh, all the parts for the body can be done at one time to give it a good coloration uh, and correct tone. So some assembly can be done prior to painting but not much. Um, it's a multiple color car and painting requires care and patience so we'll be uh, cleaning these up. 
Before you assemble these parts, um, check them over for mold lines and blemishes. Um, there's two mold lines right here that are pretty prominent and need to be removed, so sand those away carefully. Install the firewall, assemble the hood and the grill surround. Now give the parts an overall wet sanding with uh, at least an 800 grit paper. And then uh, give them a full coat of good quality primer inside and outside. And then wet sand the primer again and look for and repair any defects you might find. You might have noticed that I gave my uh, model a, quite a paint job here with some specialty paints from Alclad. These are Alclad 2 um, paints and they're multiple stage paints. Uh, but first, uh, I used a base of gold, which is uh, number 108, and then a coat of uh, several coats of candy ruby red, which is uh, ALC 703, and then finally a uh, clear coat of 310 Alclad paint. Uh, but it really makes uh, the old uh, uh, speed wagon look different, and you can do some amazing things with your Model 2 just by changing the colors and the uh, finishes for it. After painting the uh, forward section of the body, the hood, the grill surround, uh, and um, the fenders, then I masked off uh, the area in front uh, and left open the port part that I wanted to paint to wood color uh, around the sides and back. And uh, I used a light tan there and uh, some 3M fine line uh, tape to uh, delineate the color separation and then some painter's masking tape to just generally mask the rest of the section. So then I masked off everything but the roof on the body and the steps on the front fenders and painted those areas flat black. One of the trickiest parts of this kit is going to be to add those wood uh, grain decals to the insets on your body. So I suggest that you use plenty of warm water and then some decal setting solutions uh, that are available on the market. Um, Microset uh, is a good one and I would um, strongly advise you to use that as it will help the decals soften and settle into and around contours and stick to the body. To add to the looks of this kit, I got the window glass out and I sprayed um, some Alclad transparent smoke, that's um, number 405, onto the uh, rear and side windows to give it that mystique look. And then the, uh, the, other, the windshield I dipped that into some pledge floor care finish and wicked it off and after it's dry it looks very much more clear and crisp. So once uh, those are all dry you can install them using some white glue or, or some Model Masters uh, uh, part cement for clear parts. With the uh, body flipped over, uh, place the interior into it and glue it into place uh, by sliding it straight down into the body. Glue the fenders into place on the frame. Next you can install the body assembly onto the frame assembly. Gather these parts and paint the radiator and hoses flat black. Then using a mix of 50-50 uh, thinner and bl flat black paint, fill in the recesses of the uh, grill area there. And then uh, after it starts to dry, Make sure that you wipe off the highlighted uh, portions to show the chrome ribs. Then install the grill and the radiator into the grill surround. Uh, and then add this unit to the front of the car and install the hoses into place and add the radiator cap. You can complete the rear in now by uh, inserting the, uh, the red transparent lenses into the housings and installing the brake lights on the back of the body. And then cut the uh, license tag to fit the tag holder and install that uh, on the rear there too. Get the parts out for the mirror and the uh, front end lighting. And uh, there's a, a smaller set of headlights there and nacelles that uh, I didn't use. I, I don't know if they were for this kit or just options, but uh, I used the larger set. Complete the front end by adding the uh, mirror face to the mirror mount and then add, uh, putting the mirror mount on the door. And then install the headlight uh, brace bar onto the fenders and, and choose between the large or small headlights and uh, insert the lenses with some Elmer's glue and install those onto the bar. You'll have just a few pieces left over of parts that weren't used and a few decals. Well there you have it! 
Ravel's had this kit out since the 90s, and although the fit and finish isn't uh, quite what today's kits are, um, if you do a little extra work on it, she'll turn out to be just uh, delicious looking, especially if you use a candy apple red paint like that. And in in that vein, if you just do anything with the um, the paint to make this uh, not your mundane uh, speed wagon, uh, you can really get uh, a looker for your shelf. Now the motor, it builds up pretty nicely, and... Uh, and and with the hood off she looks like a street rod show car the only uh, difficulties here were the front suspension it's a little touchy so use super glue for that construction and uh, the the decals they're a little difficult to apply so you're going to need some uh, setting solution to get those in place uh, it looks really good but requires some painting uh, and masking uh, techniques that uh, aren't exactly what the beginner would would want to try and do so this is for the advanced modelers and and she is just a stunner when you put her on the shelf we hope you like this premium quality step-by-step -step review and so that you don't miss any more please subscribe to our YouTube channel but you can find us on Facebook and also at our website www.writeonreplicas.com thanks